it started off like really, really just like very rough. Like we had, we had this idea of like doing an art history kind of mural about like women, but it was a very like loose concept until like probably two weeks before we actually started like tracing and stuff. For the inspiration, I know that Ms. Butsky said that um, she wanted to celebrate women artists mm -hmm. and the design team really considered sort of what would be the most accessible way or the most accessible style that we can have everyone sort of be able to paint without having to worry about like gradient or shading or like these complicated sort of methods of painting. I think all of us individually worked on like um, specific artists. So we tried to kind of like each like break it up into artists. Um, but we worked on Illustrator a lot too for like the um, the like sketch so that we could put it on the wall. Um, that was super hard just because you can't work on Illustrator with like multiple people. So we had like tons of copying and pasting and lots of rough drafts. And then we had a final draft and then it wasn't the final draft. So we had to go back. So it was a, it was a really long process, but it ended up being, it turned out super cool on the wall, which was like our biggest fear. Cause like, it was really hard to like project it onto the wall, but it ended up turning out really cool. Um, the design team had a Google Drive folder that had various photos that you know, different people of the design team would bring in of different artists. And so I would take those designs and take those photos and see what sort of stands out. What was the most fun part about the project for you? Spackling the wall, spackling the wall, spackling the wall, spackling the wall. It was my favorite thing ever because um, the first spackle we had was pink and the consistency was like really, really smooth and it looked like cupcake frosting. And then later that day at lunch, we had cupcakes. So I was just, I was very big on the whole spackle thing. Also, it's fun. So for priming the wall, we just wanted to make sure that the paint would go on evenly. So the primer had to be even. We had to do about two coats. Um, sometimes it was difficult to tell what was already painted to do the second coat. Um, but yeah, the main focus for priming was just to make sure we had a nice blank, even canvas to work with. We basically just had our image and we projected, up, projected it up onto the wall and made sure that it was to size and what we wanted and lined up um, and made sure that it wouldn't move around or we would go over other lines and then we would uh, trace over lightly in pencil making sure that we didn't go too dark because then you would see the lines under some of the lighter paints and then after it was traced we would just begin painting and filling in the lines. The first step of color mixing is that you have to take the color that you're trying to mix and like mix it on a palette paper first before you start mixing a large quantity of it. And then you use whatever steps you took on mixing it on a palette paper and then transfer it over into mixing it into a large bucket. So like if you use like red and dark blue to get one of the darkest blues that we have, then you have to use like that same amount of that red and dark blue um, when you mix a large quantity of it.
What was your favorite part about this project? Mm -hmm. I really like painting. Mm -hmm. I think you, I think definitely when you're painting along the edges, it does get stressful because you're wondering if you don't want to go over the line. But once you get over that sort of nerve nervousness, you start to really relax and then that painting becomes therapeutic. For the background of the mural, we have more like light and dark blues, and that's because you're mostly thinking of like color theory, like you have the cooler colors in the background and then the warmer colors in the front so they pop more, so that was kind of why we chose the color scheme that we have, having like yellows and oranges in the front and then dark blue and light blue in the back. So the bird represents Garciela Intervide, who focused on highlighting indigenous life. The sculpture is the harp that was made by Augusta Savage. This design is a mix of Harriet Powers and Mary Cassatt, who were born during the same time period, and the quilt is the work of Harriet Powers. Um, this mural specifically is really important for some, um, obviously because it's a bunch of women um, who have impacted the art world in some way and gotten, um, gotten us to where we are now. Um, with a lot of them, we want to be able to be in all girls school with the ability to practice all different types of art. Um, yeah, um, I think public art in general is really important to all communities. Um, I think it's great that we're in a school that allows us to do such a public mural um, and so, so hands-on by students. Um, I would definitely do this again, any opportunity I got. Thank you.